I'm Tom Ray, and this is my art podcast. On this episode of the podcast, I get the chance to meet Becky Weber, and I make reusable things that normally would be thrown away in the garbage and try and make them art. I'm originally from up north Wisconsin. But I'm, I've am i lived here like 11 years. How did you come down here to begin with? I guess school. What did you go to school for? Fashion marketing. I can't remember exactly how I found you, yeah, I but I know. love how, how colorful your account is. Tell me first about what it is you make. Tell me about some of the things you're doing. At my old job, I acquired a bunch of mannequins. And like this was something that I've always wanted to do because they just, they throw them out. Mm-hmm. So why not reuse them or do something with them? Because I feel like that's such a waste. They just go in the landfill. Yeah. So I was like, well, why don't I paint them? You know, why why not? So I started doing that. And I really liked that because it was like big areas that I could draw on. And like, that's one thing. And then growing up, I, I would acquire like all these like little doodads, you know, like broken jewelry and like toys and like little findings. And I was like, I have so much of this stuff. Like, what can I do with it that it makes it repurposed. I'll like glue it on frames or I'll glue it on this or that and make it into something I can use then. Mm -hmm. And I can still like look at those things. I wish I still had more of it. I'm having a a problem like finding, I guess, that right now in my current art. Why is that? I don't, I don't know. I feel like I, I put my things out there but I never wanted to put my things out there, actually. Like, I never wanted anyone to see anything. I wasn't worried about, like, people being negative or anything because I've gotten a lot of, like, positive feedback. It's mostly just because, like, I made those things for me, and now I'm finding it that I'm trying to, like, make it to, you know, like, for some art shows and things like that, and I guess I'm having problems. Like, what would someone else like besides what would I like? I guess I just have to scratch that out of my head and just make something that I would like. Where are you keeping all these things? Oh my gosh, that's the hardest part. Okay, so like my parents are super nice. So they let me have all these mannequins in their basement. The rest of my mannequins are in my storage unit. Yeah, they take up a lot of room. So I'm trying to like think of other things I can make that are smaller and more easy to transport. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they're not easy to transport at all. The stuff that you do now, a lot of it is, I want to say it's kind of Day of the Dead type stuff. Yeah, I'm really into that. I'm kind of not sure if I want to like continue with that. I still like that stuff, but I'm not sure if it's just ready for a change for me. Like if I want to start doing some other abstract faces and things like that. What's your background in it? Like did you actually do anything that led up to this? You didn't just one day all of a sudden go like, All right, here's what I'm going to do now. Ever since I was really young, I've always been in art classes and to the point where I took so many art classes that I didn't know I had to take like language classes for college and things. You were in a small town. They don't usually have a lot of art classes in those places. Right. So I had to make my own. They would let me. I made my own fashion class and it was just me making dresses. So I've always been into making like not making my own clothes but redesigning them or Mm -hmm. adding to them it's not that I can't make my own I just get frustrated I guess my mom she would always help me like recreate things and so I guess that's kind of where I'm at now just kind of recreating things like if it's an old t-shirt like maybe put that on something new and then add something that doesn't really belong there like a sparkly thing or you know, something like that. But why did you start putting online? You said you were only doing it for yourself. So why did you actually start putting stuff out there? I was accumulating so many things because I just kept making things for myself mm-hmm. that I didn't have any more room for it. Mm-hmm. And it was to the point where I was like, hey, like, it's time to make new things for myself. And then I was like rotating out the old. And then I came to a gallery in town, which is no longer. So I like got let go of my job and I like found them. And I was like, okay, like this might be like a really good next step. Just getting it out there. And it can't hurt, right? So I did that and that's kind of how I started the Instagram page. Just like by posting things that I started putting out at the gallery. And then I was doing some artwork at the Inferno 
and then that got torn down. Right. Now I'm doing some things at the Crucible. Like, they have different craft days. I did two of those, and it went really well. What were you putting up in there? Oh, just some mannequin stuff, yeah. Don't you worry about people messing with it? No, I don't care. Um, but the things that I do have, I only have, like, two things there right now, but the things that I do have are up high, so no one can touch it, but... I think that was, like, their worry. That's why they didn't want, like, a full-size one there. But I was like, oh, I don't care if anyone does anything. I just want it somewhere besides my storage unit, you know? You said you had uh, displayed your stuff in, like, some of the fairs. Or What are some of the events that you've actually participated in outside of putting your things in locations around down here? I've mainly just put it into galleries. And I met a lady, and she told me I should do one of the Willie Street fairs. I want to try doing, like, something like that. Because mm-hmm. I think my things would fit well over here. And, I mean, if nothing, like, at least people can, like, look at them. Uh, That's right. fine. How do you lug it around if you're going to do that? Or do you actually have oh. some smaller things for transporting? I, I guess I don't know what you would sell or show. My car actually is it's not that big, but it can fit four full-size mannequins in there. You have to take them apart. By the way, greatest statement ever. Yes. So if you ever want to lug bodies around, you know. I know one of the things people I've talked to is setting up a booth or having a station to set up. How do you manage setting that up when you're doing this? I just kind of makeshift everything Mm -hmm. because I don't really, I'm not legit. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just a crafter, you know? Do you consider it crafting? It it seems like it's not. I don't know if it's art. Like, technically it's art, but everything's in ev- different in everyone's eyes so um, i think this summer though i would like to try doing more like of the fairs i did get asked to do this um really fun thing in milwaukee but i turned it down this year but i might do it in the summer it's called raw artists and they bring together dancers and fashion um, designers and jewelry makers and you name it anyone involved in the arts mm-hmm. And they bring them in, and the catches that you have to sell, like 20 tickets. Otherwise, you have to pay that money back. Well, I didn't have, like, $500 to, you know, I, you only know so many people that will, like, travel for your things once you've kind of exercised them so many times at art shows around and stuff like that. How often do you go out and do this stuff? I'm trying to do it more. I'm trying to be better, yeah. but it's honestly like it's it's a lot of work, it, you know, a lot of setting up and a lot of transportation, and it's just not the easiest thing for my stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's why I'm trying to like think outside the box and try and make smaller things that people would put in their homes or could use, because not everyone wants a full size mannequin staring at them. So you're making this stuff, and you said originally, you know, it was for you. And also a lot of it is just like, I want my place to look like this. But that is one of the difficult things is when you do try to sell it, I guess, what's the reception of it usually? It, like price, price can be a factor. So what's the reception usually like when you go out in public with the stuff? I go about it and say, what would I buy it for? And because I don't have a lot of money, obviously I really like art and I like having it around me. But, you know, at the same point, do I want to spend $2,000 on a piece? You know right now i'm not saying that's you know something that's not cool to do there's a lot of talented people and they deserve that but like for my big full-size pieces they do take a really really long time because it's usually like my next question was gonna be how long do they take it's like usually like three coats of paint for like each spot and there's like multiple spots on like the mannequin you know like they're all different designs put like a coating over that and then outline them all just because I like them outlined. It usually takes like weeks, but I don't really count my time into something, even though I should. How do you map out what you're going to do? Usually that's, I'll do like a base of what I'm doing. And then from there, I'll just do different shapes and designs. But you don't draw it out or anything like that? Um, mm -mm. Not even on the mannequin. I just go for it. I want to do, like, a Pokemon one. I think that'd be cool. Like, just drawing a bunch of Pokemon on there and, like, I don't know, maybe, like, a Pikachu with boobs or something. 
More of the show after this break. You have now working with the clothing. How are you putting those together? Those aren't just like print on demand things. So are you also making these one of a kind clothings yourself as well? So all those pieces that I'm selling, they were actually for me and they were kind of like the same thing. Like I didn't want to sell them. I didn't want to put them out there, but I started to and people liked them or didn't or didn't notice so it doesn't it doesn't really hurt my feelings at all it's that if you like it you like it if not that's cool you know when i had the show at the crucible i think like a month or so ago we were like maybe you should make clothes in like other sizes too and like yes i should i should um and i'm starting to maybe do that i'm not opposed to it at all i guess i just i had so many clothes that I made for myself that I was just like, okay, well, here. So, are they things that you actually do wear yeah. around? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right now, I made another Instagram account that's just like cosplay and like horror related things. So, I'm kind of more into that right now than the art page. So, horror and cosplay. Yeah. So, why, why are you now doing that? I guess it's another form of art yeah. and I get to create it on myself. Okay. And I can be any of those characters that I want to be. And I take it, to, I'm trying to take it to the level of like Pennywise, like okay. the clown. Yeah. So I'm trying to take that as a fashion level. So all this has to do with fashion. I just did a Jason Voorhees one. Okay. The mask is just bedazzled with crystals. So I was trying to take like yes. a fashion element, mix it with that. That's kind of what I'm trying to start doing. Like any like horror icon, I'm trying to make higher fashion. My friend's been taking my photos for quite a few years now. And I was like, well, maybe we should dabble in this cosplay thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I started going to horror conventions. Where? Um, they have a lot of them in Illinois, okay. actually. They have a lot of them in Indiana as well. Um, Atlanta, Dallas, really big one in Vegas. I love them, everything about them. And so you get to dress up doing that, and it's just really fun to see other people dressing up. So it's oh. like a comic convention, right. like Wizard World and stuff like that, but just mm -hmm. for horror. Yeah. So it's perfect. I like this style of non-direct horror. Let's put it this way old horror movies where you know basically like okay there's a monster it looks cool it's mm -hmm. brooding or black and white or shadows i'm like i'm okay with that mm -hmm. actual horrors scare the pants off me type stuff yeah. blood and gore can't yeah, stand I it no mm -hmm. i no that is not me whatsoever i don't know why how long have you been into horror ever since i was five my mom, she would let me, I swear to you, I swear to you, my mom, we would always watch the Twilight Zone, which is not very horror, but. That's what I'm saying. That's the, that's my style. It's, yeah, it's, I guess, more sci-fi. I would watch those. I would watch Friday the 13th, like the um, TV show. Right. So very tame, like Dark Shadows. I, I like grew up with those things. I like Dark Shadows. Yeah, that kind of that's good. And then I grew up with like, like all the Vincent Price movies and all those and. Then I I started, I remember I was seven years old, okay. and I had Hellraiser on, and my mom would not let me watch it. And so I was like, okay, I'm not watching it. And I turned to like Nickelodeon or something. Mm -hmm. When she left the room, I continued to watch it. I was like, wow, that was the coolest movie. When I was asking before, what were some of your influences on art? Would you say that that had a lot to do with it? Mostly in high school, I was just um, painting photos of Kiss. Um, that's, yes. that's all I was doing and fairies, uh, which are still some of my other two loves. I love fairies and kiss. So okay. that's pretty much what I constantly painted and drew. Never drew anything like horror. My art teacher, he was a family friend of ours. But he was my art teacher for many, many years of my schooling. Not just my high school, but when I was younger. Yeah. So when I was like in fourth grade and third grade, he was my, also my art teacher. So he knew me very well. 
And he challenged me by doing different things. Like, so I took a photography one. He would be like, okay, we'll use oils instead of just acrylics or, you know, things like that. Or like cray pods or Mm -hmm. don't use markers. And I guess things like that. I won a lot of awards for... Kiss stuff? More boring things. Some fruit got in there, some fish, you know. Yeah, the the obligatory drawing of your shoes. Yeah. Yeah. If they made me do that now, I don't think I could do I have so many shoes. I have a shoe collection. I have a shoe chair. Explain. It's a chair that's a shoe. Oh, it is a shoe. Yeah. Kind of like, um, no, it wasn't Pee Wee's Playhouse. Kind of like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a heel. Right. It's a high heel. Okay. It's actually very, I've fallen asleep on it many times. Where does one purchase this? I actually found this gem at Goodwill. Okay. Yeah. It was a very good find, probably like three years ago. We would have been fighting for it, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Going forward, what are some of the things that you wish you knew that you know would help you out? Like something you'd like to learn that you know would help you along? I guess just meeting more art people. Um, I don't think it's hard to do. It's not hard for me to meet new people, but I guess in that genre of, Mm. you know, a lot of my art friends I met at the Yellow Rose and we still keep in contact. And yeah, so that's really great. And I've, because of them, I've gotten to do some experiences or meet new people because of them. And that's really great. I guess learning about events that are in town that I could participate in, maybe. I always either find out too late. The learning about the events thing was something I struggled with at first, too. And then I found out what it is, is they really, like, you have to get on the Facebook pages of them. And then they'll send out, like, hey, submissions are going to be open. Because they do them, like, a year ahead of time. Yeah. It's like a way ahead of time. That's the one thing I've learned from that. Yes. It's just, it's really hard for me to plan a year in advance. Also, commitments are hard for me. Meeting people commitments is fine. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess, a date commitment, mm-hmm. like uh, for an event. Yeah. And who are some of the artists that you still keep in contact with? My friend Theo, he's a artist for rowing. He does a lot of rowing. Like actual, like rowing in a boat rowing? Yeah, but he paints. He paints pictures of the people rowing. And he's doing a whole like, Zodiac thing. He's trying to interpret every sign into his artwork. You were talking about horror before. So when you said Zodiac, I was like, are you talking about the Zodiac oh, killer? No, 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 <laughs> okay. no. There's some other people I keep in contact. He's one of the people that we actually like make art together. Or, like if... Even just having someone being like, hey, I'm, I'm going to come over and we're going we're gonna to paint, mm-hmm. even if it's your own thing. Because sometimes you can get in that rut, like, uh-huh, I don't want to paint. But if you have someone being like, yeah, let's, let's paint together or something mm-hmm. like that, it's, it's helpful, I think. And what are some of the things you'd like to do in the future? I found this Jesus painting that I'm going to repaint as Gene Simmons. And then I found a bunch of things that I have to bedazzle for my house. Um, as one does. As one should, right. Um, I have so many gems that I just have to use. And then I have a mannequin that I actually use for a dress that I have that I'm going to paint in only neon colors. And then I have a lot of clothes that I'm working on right now that I'm either I just need like a couple more pieces to add to it or you know, it just needs something else. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not flashy enough. So it needs something else. I have just a lot of, like, cosplay projects, too. Mm -hmm. Like, next weekend I'm doing three different looks. And so I'm trying to get all the outfits ready for those, Mm -hmm. which has become a little difficult. But How long does it take you to actually sew things together when you're doing them? Like, even if it's just one of your shirt designs. Like, if you were to mass produce them, would that be a difficult thing? No. No. I don't think so. I love that. That was like the most confident answer right there. (laughs) It was really good. You're like, no, it's fantastic. I'd like to meet anyone that's like interested in, you know, collaborating or doing any kind of show or anything like that. Because I feel like Madison is very creative. Mm -hmm. It's a very creative town. And I think that'd be really great because right now they're really aren't too many places that are doing that because I don't really, I can't really think of too many places. I know of a few, Mm -hmm. but I feel like those are for safe art. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be safe. Even the things I make for myself, sometimes they're safe. Mm-hmm. And I don't like safe. Having something that that makes you think, that makes you feel weird. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. You can learn more about Becky on Instagram at artsybecca. The music for this show is by my band, Lorenzo's Music, from the song Just In Case at lorenzosmusic.com. If you're enjoying this podcast, don't forget to subscribe, if you haven't already, on Spotify or wherever else you get your podcasts. Just search for Tom Ray's Art Podcast or visit my website at tomrayswebsite.com. I'll be back next week with another episode, so until then, so long. Thank you.